Welcome to the 9 to 5 Kickers Podcast, the show that ignites your entrepreneurial spirit by empowering like-minded, inspiring entrepreneurs to break free from the chains of the 9 to 5 grind. This Power Pack show will bring you the latest tips, tricks, and tactical strategies to accelerate your transition from the traditional 9 to 5 job to a life of boundless possibilities. Join me, your host, Mr. Anthony Porter, when I sit down with a diverse array of aspiring entrepreneurs who have dared to dream big and set their sights on a financial freedom. So whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur, hungry for a fresh start, or a budding trailblazer ready to take that leap, the 9 to 5 Kickers podcast is for you. So get ready to kick that 9 to 5 financial freedom and join me each week on the exhilarating ride. Welcome to the 9 to 5 Kickers podcast where dreams become reality and the 9 to 5 grind is left in the dust. You ready? Let's make this happen. All right, here we go. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the 9 to 5 Kickers. I am your host, Mr. Anthony Porter. In today's episode, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this because I am really super excited. I'm stoked. Um, I have a very special guest with me today. He reached out to me. Uh, let me tell you something. It's funny because he reached out to me uh, as I started uh, promoting the podcast and he said, Hey, I want to be on. And I'm like, uh, at first it wasn't going to be, uh, interviews on her, but then I got to thank you. What better way for the nine to five kickers to get out there and get other people's other people's eyes on other people's businesses. Other entrepreneurs I heard didn't have these interviews. So when he reached out, I was like, man, this is the perfect cat to do this. He's world-renowned. Uh, he's an expert in his field in pest control. Today, we are at the Pest Control Chronicles. I have Mr. Christian Allen stepping in with me today. Christian, how are you doing, my brother? I'm well. How are you, man? Hey, I'm doing super good, man. It's been a while. Uh, so for those who are new to the channel or really will be new to the channel, I met Christian about six or seven years ago, maybe maybe a little bit longer. And I met him from football. And when I first met Christian, it was, you, you looked at him and he was just, he looked like the tech guy. But he had the knowledge that you wanted to see on the football field. But Christian was one of the hardest working young cats I had ever met. Because dude was, I mean, he would come to football practice, turn around and leave. He would go do jobs. He worked at SWAT team pest control. And he would be like, yep, got to go. And I'll be looking at him like, where you going? And he'd be like, man, I gotta, I'm got, i going to work. And I'm thinking to myself, hold up, bro. You just did an exact 8 to 12 hours. You come to football practice, and you're going to do it again? And he was like, yeah, got to go. I'm, I'm out of here. And so, really, Christian was the inspiration behind me buying a Jeep, too. So a lot of people don't know that. Um, Jeep life. Yeah, Jeep guy for life, I'm telling you. So Christian was was the inspiration behind that. So Christian, I'm sure that the Pest Chronicles and everybody who's going to be tuning in or is tuning in will want to know. Tell them a little bit about yourself, my guy. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I can't say too much. I just had a rock star intro, so it's going to be hard <laughs> to, uh, to follow that. But, um, you know, like you said, we've met. I don't know, probably about seven years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. But, um, you know, we were both football coaches at Moore. And, um, but, you know, I've been in pest control for 10 years. Um, I started working for, like you said, SWAT team pest control, was there for nine years. And then it was time for me to, to leave, move on, and branch on to my own stuff. And so uh, October 21 started uh, Taylor made pest control. And so we're going on two years it's uh was a year and nine or ten months now and um 
you know, things have been great. Things have been rock and rolling. Um, we had a really good uh, full year last year, and um, we're we're having a really good second year this year. Um, last year, I hired an office person. This year, I hired a tech. Um, next year, I'll hire at least one person, maybe two, um, if things keep going as planned. But, um, yeah, I love um, I love pest control. I love everything about it, um, you know, bugs, uh, the critters, the uh, the equipment, the products, the chemicals, I mean, pretty much you name it, um, I fall in love with it. So, yep, it's a little bit about me. Okay, so you, you touched on a point that is, is very dear to me because I always want to go back to the day that we was coaching uh, down in Shawnee. And <clears throat> I, think, uh, I think my truck was down, and I asked you to take me home. And uh, actually, my truck was getting worked on. I said, you know, you know, Chris, can you drop me out? I'm like, sure, you know. And that's the one thing I liked about Christian. You know, good day, bad day, Christian was always, you know, positive. So getting in, in his SWAT team van, like, this cat had the, the van that was kitted out. But I heard this rumbling <laughs> in the back. So I, me personally, I already know how Christian maneuvers. And so... The other coaches, I said, hey, fellas, y'all not going to believe this, man. Dude got a raccoon back here, bro. And so he pops it open, and he's like, yeah, we, we, I'm going to let him out into the wild. And I'm like, huh? Like you caught him and rode around with him, and then you said just going to let him out into the wild. I mean, like, Christian, like some of the things that you used to do, just it was hilarious. But I could tell in that moment that, you enjoy what you've done or what you was doing. So I guess, you know, the question for me is, and the question for the listeners is, what inspired you to want to go into pest control? Uh, you'll be disappointed. There's no inspiration. It was, um, I was 21, no college degree, and um, just looking for a job. So, um, I'm, I'm sure you remember, you know, I'm not from Kentucky, so um, right, right. I moved down here from New Hampshire just for, to work for SWAT. So I met, uh, Charlie, the owner, uh, probably about 15 years ago now, um, at a class union, he and my dad went to high school together. And, um, so out of the blue, one of his guys, uh, left the police academy and he needed somebody. And my dad's like, well, you know, Chris, so, um, he asked if I wanted to come down here. I said, sure. So not knowing anybody, just moved down here, and um, now the rest is history. So, it you know, to start, it was just a job. Um, it probably took two, uh, two, or, two or three years for me to, to get into it and then finally really fall in love with it and enjoy it. Um, but, yeah, it was just a job. I don't think, you know. I don't think any little kid, little boy or girl grows up and be like, man, I just want to be a, a pest control operator one day. So, you know, it's one of those things that people need it. And um, it fills, you know, fills my cup. I get to help people. I get to meet new people. Um, I get to experience new things and I get to play with gadgets. So it, it works out great. <laughs> hey, right. Hey, but look, check this out. You will be surprised. Like you would be surprised that, uh, what people really think. Like, I really didn't think that I would be, you know, working in sanitation or sanitary sewers. But once you start, like, it becomes something that you can really, you know, home, home in on. And so when I sit back and I watch you, and I've watched you, like, literally, like, watched you maneuver, it's very important that, for, for a person like me, uh, and especially in the world that we're living in, pest control is very important because there are a ton of pests that are out here. Now, I've watched you over the last couple of months, the last year. I've seen you going down to the uh, uh, pest conventions and things like that. I watched you go and get certified because the one thing I can't say about you is, is when you set your mind to do something, you do it. I have to give you credit on that. 
And that's one thing that inspired me when I first met you, because when you set your mind to wanting to be uh, the best special teams coach, you, you, you took care of that. When you set your mind to doing and setting out to become an entrepreneur and being your own business owner, you did that. And so, uh, first of all, I commend you, and I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, our listeners will commend you just as well. But as we get into it, and, you know, I guess the question is, is, you know, being an entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur, that, like, what are you, what, 28, 29 now? Ooh, I wish. I don't know how old I am. I'm thinking like 31, 32. My wife would tell me at some point, but uh, yeah. So 30s, that's for sure. She tells, she reminds me of that every day. Could I tell her I'm 29 again? (laughs) Well, I tell you what this, this is something I want to ask you. Be it the fact that you second year in, what sets you aside? What sets you apart from the competition like? What, what do you feel like that you bring to the table better than the rest? Well, you know, that's a, um, that's a question everybody tries to answer. Um, and it's, you know, hard to quantify all that because people um, call you and they don't meet you. So, it's hard, you know, everybody says they're the best. Everybody says that, you know, they're going to take good care of you and all, all this jazz. Um, but I guess what really sets us apart is um, it's going to be our communication. So that's something that you can experience without even meeting us, because whether that's on social media, whether that's online, whether that's on a website, or after you call us or text us or email us or message us and start um, inquiring about services with us, you know, we're going to be upfront, we're going to be honest, um, we're going to, com- we're going to over communicate with you, we're going to make sure you know everything that's going on and um, about, you know, your pest issue, um, the services we're providing for you, the cost and all, all that stuff. Um, that's going to be well communicated multiple times so that there's no confusion. And if you have questions, you know, we're going to answer all the questions that you have. Um, and but, you know, that's kind of what sets us apart. The other thing, we're urgent to get to you. So, um, you know, we're we're trying to be same day, next day. Doesn't always happen. Um, We try to answer our phones all the time. Um, That doesn't always happen. But um, that's the main thing. We're going to get to you quickly. We're going to make sure you know what's going on. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about having a pest-free home. And that's what, you know, that's what we provide. We provide peace of mind by providing a pest-free home for you. Okay, okay. Hey, listen, you said anything. You have you have touched on a few points that I'm quite sure a lot of people have dealt with or will deal with, and they can help you stand out more uh, with this side of your business. And the main one was communication. And so I've noticed, like, the more you communicate with people, the more you're upfront with them, the more you're honest with them, the more they appreciate you. And uh, the one thing I can say, I will say this, and I'm not tooting your horn because you're sitting here or anything like that. The one thing I will say is this. You have always been a guy that's been straight up. You have always been a guy. <laughs> you have always been a guy. Hey, you, 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 you've told a couple people. I've heard you tell a couple people how you feel. But you have always been straight up, man. And uh, I do have to say that that's one of the uh, that's one of the best things that drew my attention to you. Because if you if you remember when we all met, only only people who knew each other was uh, you and you and you and uh, Stalins, and then uh, uh, I met all of y'all on the back end. But I knew Virgil. And I knew Kevin, but myself, you, Jim, we all and Verge, we all clicked because we, had, we we thought outside the box. And that's one thing I can say about you: you think outside the box. Uh, I've never seen. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen a person get excited to get gadgets. Like <laughs> I would, I would sit. There, so I follow Christian on Instagram, 
And later on, we'll have Christian drop all his information. We'll even put it in the show notes for everyone to have. Uh, but I've never seen a person like literally sit at lunch. Like he would go to lunch and post a video about something new that he got. And did it be to the point where about 10 minutes later, I, I texted, and where you get that at? And he would tell me, uh, you know, I really, um, Amazon. And then I'd be like, bro, like, you got all these packages. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm addicted. And he's just so nonchalant about how he did things. And so that's why I'm like, when he reached out, I was like, yeah, he got to be the first guest because this is my guy. All day long, this is my guy. Uh, he decided to not to coach you no more because he started his own business. And as, and as an entrepreneur, trust me, as an entrepreneur, it takes up a lot of time. Like I'm trying to juggle five different companies and work a nine to five. And so uh, I commend him for that. But, you know, I got to get down into it a little farther down there, Mr. Allen. So with that being said, with you buying all of these gadgets, how do you stay up to date with the latest advancements and, you know, the technical, the tech, the tech world in pest control like I know you have to go to these conferences, but tell the listeners what what are some of the things that um, you have to keep up with? Uh, well, I mean, how do I know about all these gadgets? It's um, quite frankly, Zuckerberg, um, Facebook ads. Um, they they get me every time. But um, you know, you got to go to different conferences. You got to you got to have your continuing education credits. So, um, you know, you go to these different conferences to get your hours to stay certified and licensed. And they're always sponsored by um, all these different companies that um, make products or equipment or whatever the case may be. So they're always trying to sell you the latest and greatest things. And, you know, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. You know, they, you know every, every year it's the same thing. They, they got something new that they're going to push push and you know that's what they're going to tell you about and that's what they're going to you know try to sell you and so you have to weed through the the good through the bad and figure out what's going to work for you and um what you know what works so the good thing is the, uh, over time you build personal relationships with everybody and um, you start having connections and and then if you're active on social media like i am um you know they start trying to to try to start sell things by giving you some things. So I get a lot of things. I get some things, not a lot of things, but some things for free. And I get to try it out and then make a post about it or a video. And um, Good, bad, or ugly, it all gets posted up there. Um, but um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's uh, it's about going to these conferences, learning different things. Um, there's different industry magazines um, out there that I read. Um, and then, you know, networking, networking's huge. Um, yeah, I know multiple companies here locally, um, that I talk to on a daily basis. And then a lot of companies I talk around the U S so, um, you know, they're, they're trying something new, mainly it's me trying something new and they reach out to me because they want to see what I think about it. But sometimes they have a good idea or they, they run across something I didn't, I didn't find or see. And uh, then I then I have to try it out. Um, it's not a great hobby to have. It's not a great um, addiction to have. It's very costly. Um, but you know, it's fun. It's my hobby. You know, some people like to go hiking. Some people like to, you know, go fishing or whatever. I like spending money on things that I may or may not <laughs> use. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's hey. a, what do they call it? Shopping therapy or something? Uh, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> therapeutic. So, but you know, you said you said one thing that that really touched in, and I I, I just want to say this for 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 a guy who started out working for someone, and you probably built uh, built that relationship, that networking relationship with that company. Um, as you as you got into your own um, journey uh, for your business, you know, tell them a pest control. I could tell that the influence portion of your life has really evolved because you said something that 
key that was key that people reach out to you. I don't know many companies that um, a year and a half in, two years in, or companies, major companies are reaching out to them. So for you to have people reaching out to you, that that speaks volumes of the the the, the networking skills that you have and the way that you present yourself. Because there's a there are a lot of companies out here that. Behind the scenes, I don't know if they – now, I'm quite sure people do. Let me say that. I'm quite sure that they do. Uh, vendors will come in and speak to them. But be it the fact that you're a year and a half, two years in, and you and so far you've – so far, like I said, your your social media presence is, is immaculate, bro. And uh, I, I, I love – first of all, I love the pest fields. Those are <laughs> funny. So uh, I love the pest funerals. When the first time I seen one man and you had the customer on the porch with you doing a pest funeral, bruh, I about lost my load. I said, this, this cat here is hilarious. So I just want you to understand that, you know, I have sat back and watched and have been so proud to say that I know this cat and, um, I've, I tell people all the time, hey, look, you're tired of dealing with the, the, the major brands and you want somebody that's going to come through, holler at my boy Christian. You know, he tell him, hey, pest control. They they know how to – I tell them how to get to you. Um, and I also tell them, look here, don't throw my name out there because you ain't getting no discount. <laughs> it don't work like that. Because the, the, the one thing everybody I was, they want the homeboy hookup. I'm not giving up nothing. My guy is, he's an entrepreneur and he is doing him. And so my thing is this, go see him. You ain't asking Gucci and Louie for a discount. Don't ask the pest guy from the Pest Control Chronicles for no discount. Get them bugs, get them roaches at your house. Get them well, there are the friends and benefit discount. The friends and uh, the friends and family discount is always double what it actually costs. <laughs> right. So if it's one hundred and fifty dollars, it's going to be three hundred dollars. Yeah. Hey. You know, hey. We'll, we'll give you the regular. Price. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so let me let me ask you this, man. Because in in your opinion, in your opinion, what is the most effective and eco friendly approach to dealing with pest control? And I'm asking you this because. I know that sometimes you might go into a situation where homeowners might have a small infestation and they have pets. And how do you work around it? Like, how do you, how do you prepare going into a situation like that? Well, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like anything. It's kind of like coaching football. Uh, you know, you have your different plays, you have your different tools, you have your different weapons per se, that you can use, whether it's a fast guy, strong guy, small guy, big guy. So there's a lot of different things that I can do to kill your pest. And that's the one thing I do tell everybody. There's a million ways to kill that roach. And um, my, you know, I have a way. Billy Bob over there has a way. Um, they, they, they all work. It's just a matter of which one works best. And fortunately, you know, in this day and age, um, most everything is pretty people and pet friendly um, when used according to the label. So it's about reading labels, it's about following the rules, the laws, and all that stuff, and not doing anything stupid. Like, you know, you see pictures back in the day where there's somebody spraying a little girl's hair for lice um, with DDT, or, um, you know, the kids, you see the mosquito fog truck running down the road, and you see kids on their bicycles. Um, you know, riding behind it, thinking that they're getting a, a nice, cool bath or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, people survived, I guess. You know, people live to tell the stories of that. But we've become a lot more responsible as an industry. Um, we have a lot of regulation, but we've become a lot more responsible in that it's a targeted approach. So it's not just spraying everything everywhere. You know, it's inspecting. Um, it's, um, you know getting that chemical where the bug is. You got, you know, um, a famous entomologist says, you got to get the bug juice where the bugs are. Um, and that's pretty much where we do. We get the bug juice where the bugs are, and where the bugs are, not necessarily where people and pets and kids are going to be at. 
Um, and so, you know, that's, that's about it. It's about knowing, knowing the stuff you're using, about knowing where you're going to put it. And, um, and then, you know, just common sense is not so common, but it helps. It goes a long ways. You know, don't, don't drink it. Don't, don't eat it. Don't spray somebody's right. water or Gatorade down with it. You know, little things like that. So, so far, I'm, I'm proud to say I haven't killed anyone or anything I haven't wanted to yet. So, kill a lot of things, <laughs> but we've had a lot of past funerals. But we have oh, yeah. other thing funerals. So I, th- I think I'm, I'm a, uh, proud of that. I think I'm going to uh, call my buddy over at Mr. Wave Tech Beats and have him drop some funeral music for you, so you can start having you should past funerals. So. You should You're, uh, uh, the Wave Tech Beats are great. I have compliments <laughs> on them, so we need some funeral music too. So. I'll, I'll reach out to him and let him know you need that funeral Sounds music. Good. So. So let me ask you this, because I know you're busy, probably prepping for tomorrow. You might have to run out tonight. So we're not going to hold you up too much longer, but I just got a couple more questions I want to get out there. And um, and then we'll go, and then I'm going to let you go, man. You know, I enjoy talking to you. Look, I got all the time in the world for you. I heard Porter <laughs> was doing an interview and told the wife, look, you know how Porter is. He likes to talk. So, um, you know, yeah, it's 30 hey. minutes, but, uh, no, you know, it might, I'll see you tomorrow. So, but. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm going to tell you what's funny. Me and Verge was talking the other day and, uh, he told me, he said, uh, he said, boy, you're the only person I know who could disappear from a meeting. I said, yeah, and still be in the meeting. He was like, bro, you cold with it, but nah, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold it to it because you got to. <laughs> So, like I said, I got a few more minutes, and, you know, it might go over 30, but maybe five or 10 minutes. But let me say this to you. I really want to ask you this. You know, we talked about the gadgets, and I go back to that because I see in the world today there are a ton of uh, new technology and new this and new that. So, uh, are there any emerging trends or any emerging technology that, has come out that has interested you or has inspired you to fight some of these, uh, these new age bugs. Like, uh, I, listen, I've seen bugs running around the city of Louisville, like, Hey humans. So I just want to know, are there any, uh, new age trends to help fight some of these, uh, I guess I want to call them shop built bugs. Cause they probably look like they was migrated and grown in a, uh, a lab somewhere. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. Pest control seems to be behind a lot on technology and where the world's at. But um, there's there's a couple of new things. Um, you know, there's a mosquito trap that um, has larvicide in there and creates a natural breeding spot for the mosquitoes to breed in. So the the mother uh, mosquitoes go in, lay their eggs, and then they they uh, hatch out, but they don't pupate into uh, blood-sucking insects. So those are those are catching on. It seems like um, I went to a house yesterday where another company was using them. So that's always fun to see. I've been kind of pimping that out to everybody. Um, and then something that hasn't really caught yet, I don't think, but I think will um, eventually as time goes on and maybe they get it cheaper um, is Bluetooth uh, rodent stations. Um, you know, they, it, you know, I tell people all the time, there's no barcode on a bug or a rat so we can't tell where they came from, but now we can tell when the base stations are visited, how many times, what times, and that it's going to give us data to, um, to be, you know, to be able to either up the frequency or be like, you don't have to come as often. Um, it, it tells you, it shows you when the feeding patterns are so you know everybody knows they're mostly nocturnal but now you can actually see that with with hardcore data um and so you know that's the biggest thing is when you're trying to run a company is you know baseball's got to figure it figured out um so i'm trying to run my team my my company like a baseball team we have, they got batting averages they got slugging percentages eras and so you got to, you know, as a business owner, you got to know your KPIs, your key performance indicators. And so, you know, that's production, that's profit, that's, you know, expenses and how, how much you make per minute, per mile, per hour. Um, so you got to know all these different things. And so having a bait station that can give you that type of data 
is able to help you further um, service the customer so they don't ever see a rat or a mouse again. Um, so, you know, those are the two biggest ones. You know, there's definitely um, the big trend nowadays is um, the battery-powered backpack sprayers. So, you know, the spraying equipment has become, has come a long ways from where we first started with a little silver canister and you had to pump it. Um, so now it's battery powered and the only thing you have to worry about is keeping your battery charged. Um, so it can reach 30 feet in the air. You don't have to get on a ladder anymore to, to get a hornet's nest. Um, so, you know, there's, there's lots of different things, but probably the backpack sprayer is the biggest one that's the most popular thing that most everybody else is getting on board with. Um, so it makes everybody's life easier. Hey, listen. I'm just sitting here. I'm learning a lot because I'm, listen, I'm not a, I'm a tech guy, but there's just certain fields that I just don't dabble in. And <clears throat> if I got a problem, I know who I'm calling. So we just going to keep it all the way real. Like I've, I've called before and Johnny on the spot, you was there. Uh, I think everybody has called before and you know, that we've, we, we're around in our circle and you've been Johnny on the spot. And like I said, it's always been that you've kept it 100. You've kept it as real as you possibly could. Uh, and one thing I can say with, 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 with your mind frame, you know, you don't, you don't bite your tongue, my brother. I have to give you credit <laughs> on that. You don't bite your tongue. I've changed a little bit. I've learned you have to, you have to a little bit. <laughs> uh, well, maybe, 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 in, maybe in the entrepreneurial world, just, just a small amount. Yeah, I, I, I learned that too because um, I, I kind of get caught up with with the way that I handle myself at work. So, uh, yeah, I have to change too. So I understand where you're coming from. So one more quick question, and well, yeah, I might pop one out. So finally. You know, let me ask you this. What are your future goals? Like, I'm going to ask you two quest three questions all in one. So what are your future goals okay. and aspirations for yourself and your company? And do you have any advice for anybody starting in a business in y your field or maybe somebody who might join your team? Yeah, so um... – Goals and aspirations for myself personally. Um, I want to be the face, even though I have an ugly face, I want to be the face of um, pest control industry. So, you know, I want Christian Allen to be synonymous with pest control. Um, you know, when, when you think of bugs and you think of critters, I want you to think of my goofy ass. Um, so, um, you know, I'm doing that by, you know, social media. Um, putting myself out there. So I'm an open book. Um, people tell me, don't post your numbers. Don't, don't say this, don't say that. And I post it anyways. Um, so like it, or love it. Um, I'm going to say things that you don't like. I'm going to say things you do like. I'm going to say things that piss you off. I'm going to say things that make you sad or whatever the case may be, but it's, it's out there. It's kind of like um, back in the day, people used to write journals. I don't like writing. So I, I go to Facebook and, and YouTube and make a video um, with TikTok. Um, and so it's it's chronicling where I came from to where I'm where I'm going to be at to where I hope to be at. Um, and um, so, yeah, so I'm looking to be the face of an industry. I want to be able to travel the world, the country, and speak at other um, universities, other companies, meet other pest control people. I want to speak at different conferences and bug events. Um, you know, I want to partner with the University of Kentucky at some point to um, be the company that they use for their college studies on bed bugs and roaches and whatever else they want to study. Um, so I want to be a part of that. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of my goals. It's kind of where I want to be at. Um, and so, you know, slowly but surely, you know, everybody knowing who I'm at, networking and meeting every a lot of different people. Um, you know, I'm on the – I was just nominated, I think, for um, – to be on the Kentucky Pest Management Association board. So that's going to be voted on to, uh, the last Tuesday of July. Congratulations. Uh, so I think I'm pretty much a shoe in for that. Um, but, yeah, it's just – this is little things like that. It's meeting meeting different pest control people, helping 
and then helping other people along the way um, for that. Um, and long-winded. So uh, goals for my company is um, I want – at some point I'm going to have to sell this thing probably where we have kids and I sell it to my, my kids and give them the friends and family discount on that, which is double the price. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, yeah, it's eventually to sell. It's This is my retirement plan. You know, I'm no longer paying into um, – Social Security or whatever like that. So I'll have a super small Social Security check uh, to collect from. So this is going to have to be my retirement. But until then, I want to grow this thing. I want to provide. Um, I want to provide a living uh, income for as many different Kentuckians as possible, or Indian or Indianians. So, um, and um, for that to happen, we got to grow. So we can't be small forever. So we're looking to do millions of dollars in revenue a year. Um, and so it's just to grow the company to where people have upward growth. Um, the biggest thing that I don't want to see is I don't want to lose, uh, a person because, you know, they had to go be a branch manager for some other company. I don't want them to go be Orkin's branch manager. I have nothing against Orkin, but they have enough branch managers. I want our, us to have our own branch managers. And so if you want to become a manager, if you want to become technical director, whatever you want to be, I want my company tailor-made to be able to provide that opportunity for different people. Um, and so the only way you do that is growing, uh, making more money. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. You know, hopefully we hit, um, we're on pace to, to hit a million by 2025. Um, and so we're just quick, quick growth. It's sometimes a good thing and it's a bad thing all at the same time. Um, but that's the goals for personally me and then the company, Taylor Made, since we're two different entities. Um, and then um, advice, um, pest control or any business, um, it's just, it just do it. Um, you know, I've been playing with the idea for like two or three years before I actually did it. And I was content with where I was and didn't want to do it. But at the end of the day, I just did it. Um, I had $2,000 in savings and no plan. I didn't have the right licenses to start out. So I had to, so I just quit without, without having any plan. And, um, you know, it's probably the most backwards way to do it, but, you know, I didn't have any funding. I don't have any investors. It's just me and my credit cards and my, um, credit history, uh, credit scores that got us to where we are right now. Um, and so now the company is starting uh, to provide for itself and to reinvest into it. Um, and so you just got to do it. You just got to put yourself out there. You just got to do it. And you're going to make mistakes. I make a million mistakes before 8 o'clock. Um, so, you know, I make mistakes when I'm sleeping. I make mistakes when I'm eating lunch. You know, I make mistakes doing a lot of things. As long as you learn from your mistakes, the mistakes aren't bad. And more times than not, it's not going to be a life-threatening, a business-ending threatening decision. Um, so you just got to be able to pivot quickly. You got to be able to just just do it. You know, like Nike says, just do it. Um, and um, you know, just and then yeah, it's pretty much just do it. And you know, it's, it's that same way with social media. I post a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, and people are like, man, he just know how to do all this stuff. I don't know how to do anything any of that stuff. I'm just learning <laughs> how to do it. Um, and I'm just doing it. And so I can see from when I first started to where I am now, it's a lot better, um, but still not perfect. Um, you know, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. Um, good enough is good. Um, so good enough pays the bills. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You have to pay bills. Per, you know, don't kill yourself trying to be perfect because nobody's perfect. And nothing's ever going to be perfect. And if, your trying for perfection is never going to happen. Um, and so that's the biggest advice to anybody um, and anything, starting a business, doing your job, whatever the case may be. Just, you know, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. Hey, man, you said a mouthful right there. Um, even if even if I wasn't doing this right now, going into um, – a business, just the things you just said about perfection, that has what kept, that's what has kept me from doing this many moons ago. I'm, I'm such a perfectionist. You know that. 
when it come to football, I was a perfectionist. Like I didn't, it, we could, we could have 150 solo tackles and I still wanted 300. And we knew we weren't going to get 300, but I had the kids believe in that. And just listening to you talk about the pest game, the, 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 the way that it is, it's evolving and, how you jumped out there on the whim. See, that's bootstrapping to me. And that's that's how most companies uh, that can be successful and have been successful have started. Like, I've done my research to find out that one of your favorite companies, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, he literally started in the garage. I mean, like, can you imagine starting your company that is now worth trillions of dollars in a garage? And he didn't even start it, like, he did, he started as a bookstore. Right, right. And that's and it's completely pivoted to now that's I mean, crazy. gosh, everything we get from Amazon now. I just ordered from Amazon. Matter of fact, I, I guess I just got three or Amazon packages. I don't know what I ordered, but we got something. <laughs> you sound like me because I got some stuff. They said I had some come yesterday. I got something to come today. I got something coming Monday. And I and I, I turn around and what did I order? I looked at the wife. Like Christmas every day. Exactly. Hey, so Christian, I thank you, man. I appreciate you, bro. Like you have been, this, this has been one of the, I was super nervous, man. I was super hyped uh, because I hadn't looked at the emails because I had been working all morning. One thing I, I tell a lot of people is if you're doing, if you're doing a, uh, if you're a business owner, you got to understand everything's always going to be your fault, no matter what. If, you, if, the, if the employees don't get their own time, it's your fault. You didn't wake up on time, it's your fault. So, I mean, you know, everything is always your fault. So I was working this morning, working on some some content for the, for the not the podcast, but for the YouTube channel. And I went in my emails and I said, did Christian just respond? Because I, I think I just sent that to you yesterday. And... <laughs> I said he was resp- so I'm running around the house now like oh I gotta get ready I gotta I gotta do this I gotta make sure I send him this I gotta make sure I send him that and you know just so he'll be ready and and, and then I'm sitting around and I took a quick cat nap and set my alarm clock and woke up and was like it's time and it has been an honor man like I appreciate you being the first guest I really do appreciate that I've learned a lot I hope the listeners have learned a lot. Um, before we get out of here, though, man, can you please, please tell the people how they can reach you, um, all of the good stuff that they need to know, uh, social media, all of that. And then when, when it's done, before we put the show out there, I'll make sure that we get the links and we can upload everything, uh, so they can always click on it. And, uh, yeah, just let them know how they can get in touch with Teleme Pest Control and Mr. Christian Allen. Yeah, so we're super findable, um, or I, that's why I try to make it anyway. So you can follow me on Facebook, uh, I'm Christian Pest Control Allen. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Christian Pest Control Allen. Um, you can find me on Twitter and TikTok and Instagram. Um, and that's uh, the Pest Influencer, at the pe- at Pest Influencer. Um, and then for the business, everything is Tailor made PC. So pest control, tailor made pest control, LinkedIn's tailor made pest control. Oh, I'm on next door too. Next door, I'm Christian Allen, and next door, we're tailor made pest control. Um, it might have LLC on the back of it, um, but Instagram, Twitter, TikTok um, is at tailor made PC. Um, and um, you can email me at Christian at tailor made pest control.com. You can call me, text me. Um, number is 502 219 4688. Um, if you call my extensions 101, but you can also text that number too. Um, and, um, I think that's all we're on right now. Um, we might be on other stuff too, but that's the main one, Facebook and Scram. Oh, we're on YouTube. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Um, you can follow the journey in the journey. It's it's no longer the journey in the journey, but we're going to still roll with that name because I can't figure out a journey in the equinox or, can't figure out a cool name yet. Um, so, but <laughs> the channel is where you can see all my cool gadgets and see how well or bad we're doing as a business. Um, 
the, um, the YouTube channel is Pest Tech and the Pursuit of Happiness. And we came up with that name because I deal with pests. I love tech. And at the end of the day, you got to be happy. So right. uh, we always try and be happy. Um, and then on YouTube for pest, or for TaylorMade, it's um, TaylorMade Pest Control um, on YouTube too. Um, and so the number I gave you is the business number. Um, if you've got a pest problem, you can uh, you can reach out to us there or on Facebook or wherever we're at or on Google and all, all those different places. Email for the business at info at TaylorMadePestControl.com. Um, so, yeah. That's it, man. Christian, man, I appreciate it, bro. Like, I really do. And I'm quite sure that my listeners will appreciate this because, you, you know, everybody's got a pest problem. Somebody in the world has a pest problem. There's a wasp, bee, cockroach, ant somewhere around that they can reach out to Telemay Pest Control. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of my very first interview, man, and I'm so proud because this is my guy. And, you know, uh, the one thing that in in my in the podcast industry that they said was is reach out to your friends. Well, I just so happened had a friend that reached out to me, and he just probably gave y'all about a quarter million dollars worth of game. He gave y'all a quarter million because that's a lot of information out there. Uh, whether you want to start a business, whether you want to be in the business, uh, all the new stuff that's going on, hey. He just gave you a million, quarter million dollars worth of game. So with that being said, hey, let's give Christian a round of applause. We want to thank Christian for coming out and joining us today on our journey, the 9 to 5 Kickers, where we are empowering like-minded individuals to kick their 9 to 5 and take that journey to become their own successful entrepreneur. Christian. Again, my brother, I appreciate you, man. Oh, one more thing before you go. I got to get you and James on the show. <laughs> okay. We're gonna, we, we got to talk about the – we got to 